Welcome to Friday morning devotional. From time to time, I like to read some thoughts from classic uh, authors like Oswald Chambers or A.W. Tozer, people who have shared some things that have lasted a long time and people really read them and care about them. The word I want to read is based on or is under the topic of the Great Commission, making disciples. So Matthew 28, the end of Matthew, the end of the three years with the disciples. Matthew 28, verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So we have the famous, well-known, great commission, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. As I read that to you, I'm so aware of two things that have marked my entire life, adult life, and most of my ministry. That is, I have taken the Great Commission, as most have, I believe I'm correct to say most take the Great Commission to do two things. Get people saved and teach them things. So, and you might think, well, of course. Well, I'm going to read something from Oswald Chambers. I've been reading his devotional every year for probably 20 years, every year. His, my utmost for his highest. He makes profound statements. But as I read Matthew 28 to you, I'm so aware that I emphasized, along with most Baptist preachers and other people, getting people saved. And then because there's such a high view, once someone is saved, we believe they're secure in the Lord. And I really believe that 100%. No doubt in my mind. When someone's genuinely saved, they are genuinely secure. But what has happened, what I've realized, and I'm going to explain why in a moment, but what I realize now, I was so uh, taken back by their security or so influenced by my belief that they are secure that the next thing was, I thought, well, if they will, they need to attend classes, go to Sunday school, go to church, really be great if you went to discipleship classes and learn. It says here, teach them. So get people saved, and if they would, learn some things. Well, let me interrupt here, or let me move to the devotional paragraph I want to read. Now, Oswald Chambers is referring to a scripture where the disciples went out and they came back and they were all excited that the demons, 
jumped when they said jump. And now, let me say, if you're not an Oswald Chamber veteran, or even if you are, you'll find that Oswald Chambers uses some vocabulary that's odd sometimes. Uh, and he has some, he makes statements that are a little awkward and you have to really know his whole theology to get it. So he says this about the disciples saying how excited they were that the demons obeyed them. Here's what, and of course Jesus said to them not to rejoice in, in the fact that the demons obeyed you, but to rejoice in the fact their name is in the book of life. But the point of the devotional is their joy was misdirected. They were all excited about things they saw. And so let me read on what Oswald Chambers said. He says, Jesus told the disciples not to rejoice in successful service. And yet, yet, this seems to be the one thing in which most of us rejoice, you know, accomplishing things. We have this view, quote, so many souls saved. Now everything's fine. And he reads, he goes on to say, our work begins where God's grace has laid the foundation. And he says this, we are not to save souls, but to disciple them. And I'll explain what I believe he means. We're not to save souls, but to disciple them. Salvation and sanctification are the work of God's sovereign grace. Our work as his disciples is to disciple lives until they are wholly or completely yielded to God. One life, holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, one life completely devoted to God is of more value to God than 100 lives simply awakened by His Spirit. So let me translate what I believe he's saying. He's saying when you get someone to pray to receive Jesus, and they really do it, genuine salvation. They hear the gospel of Jesus. He died on the cross. They are sinners. He can save them from their sin. If you help them bow before the Lord and say, Lord, please save me. He calls that a person awakened by the Spirit. And if they're simply awakened, not discipled, that's one thing. But to be awakened and discipled is another thing. So let me read his sentence again. One life wholly devoted to God is of more value to God than 100 lives simply awakened by His Spirit. Now, one life saved is wonderful, and that person finds value in that when they see the Lord at their death. Oswald Chambers is not saying they don't. He said very carefully, one life wholly devoted to God is of more value to God. So the picture is this. Somebody gets saved. They come to know the Lord genuinely. Their heart is awakened to God through Jesus. Then they're discipled and they start this journey and they, they get on the journey and they start growing and processing the Word of God and truth, theology, and they pray and they experience God in their life. That's more valuable to God than simply getting saved and not growing. So let me come back to my original point. I want to make this very clear. Uh, I personally, 
right now today, well, I want to say that I am noticing, I am witnessing, I am observing a widespread, a widespread revival on the emphasis of discipleship. In other words, my story is a lot of people's story. They focused on getting people saved and kind of left their growth to whoever and whatever and kept on going to the next person to get saved. Now, let me say this. Uh, my experience is, my observation in the church, most people, most, M-O-S-T, have never experienced on a one-to-one -one basis, literally face-to-face -face personally. Most people have never experienced the experience of someone because of you talking to them and your conversation, not because, but you're there talking to them and, the God, and God uses that and they say, you know what, I need to be saved. I want to. And they get on their knees and they pray to ask Jesus in their heart. I have experienced that several times. Every time it happens, it is extremely, it's a very special feeling. It's very special to see that, to, to feel it, to experience it. It really is special. And I, that's, it just is very special. And that's, and what, therefore you want to see it again. It's exciting. What, what is typically not exciting is the hard, hard work of working with somebody to keep, see if they'll meet with you and go over biblical truth. So what, I, what I'm saying this morning is that there is a widespread revival. I see it. This church is part of it. And it is good. And it includes Southern Baptist leadership. It includes Southern Baptist denominational workers. This is not some unusual movement that's somewhere else. It is somewhere else. It is in other places, in other groups, but it's also with us. And it's with Oswald Chambers right here. He was a British military chaplain in World War I, 1914, 1917. He said this, we're not to save souls. He doesn't mean you don't share the gospel. Of course you do. But God will save them. But you do have a responsibility. He leaves that to us to disciple them. Our work as his disciples is to disciple lives until they're wholly yielded to God. I want to close with this. I've been part of a life group for over three years and I have noticed something. Even with people who signed up to be in a group, it is very, very difficult to challenge people, I use the word confront, to confront people when they say something that indicates spiritual immaturity or they need to grow. I have experienced in this three years, it is difficult to do, which means it is easier to talk to someone about getting saved and they do it or they don't do it and move on to the next one. But to sit with someone and to challenge them in their own life, where they are, where they need to change, where they said something that indicates they have a wrong view of God. 
and you need to correct them. Not easy to do. All that to say, God is raising up many, many, many churches and leaders to the need of discipleship. And we're reading people like Oswald Chambers and we're hearing preachers and devotional writers say things we've heard before, but it's really coming alive with the wonderful commission of making disciples helping them become fully devoted followers of God. And of course, the biggest responsibility for you to do that for someone else means you must be fully devoted follower of Christ. As we continue to talk about that subject, pray about it in your own life. Where, where is that with you, that topic, this devotional message today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your patience as you watch the church all these 2,000 years have go through cycles of emphasis and churches doing one thing or another, preachers uh, emphasizing one thing or another. Father, thank you for being patient for us to come around seasonally from time to time to what you've asked us to do. Thank you for your mercy in that. And I pray for everyone listening today that we would seriously consider where we are in this whole world of discipleship, disciple making, the whole theology of making disciples. Father, help us to grow in that area. In Jesus' name.